Let's <laughs> talk about what's happening on the college campuses, Camille, because the of course we're showing this, you know, the guy on the bike and we're showing stuff that's happening mm -hmm. overseas and we're showing what's happening at the New York University, uh, that you know, Cooper Union, but at New York University, NYU, it's a weird kind of ground zero in some of this. It and UPenn have been embarrassed along with Harvard, probably more than any other institution. And that's saying something. Uh, we saw the other day mm -hmm. NYU students staging a pro Hamas walkout. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of that before I get to the latest on Rhino Workman. Here's the walkout, SOT 17. So there you have it. We don't want no Jewish state. We want all of it. I mean, I'm thinking maybe the two state solution is not really what's going to solve it for them, Camille, but the college campuses are out of control and those are our future leaders. And before I toss it to you, I want to show you Rhino, Rhina Workman. Rhina is the woman. She wants me to go by they. It's a no. Um, and she's the one who was the president of the Student Bar Association at NYU Law, whose immediate ac action a reaction, as they were still collecting the bodies in Israel, was to blame Israel entirely for everything, who had then her Winston and Straw associate offer withdrawn. She had been a summer associate. She got an offer. They withdrew it when they saw her horrible statements. Right on. I support them. And is she humbled is she having second thoughts about her positions now that she's lost this opportunity and she's become the scourge of people paying attention? Well, you tell me. Here she is on ABC on Tuesday. Do you condemn Hamas's actions on October 7th? I think what I use my platform for and who I condemn was pretty clear by my <laughs> message. And I think that I will continue to condemn apartheid and military occupation and that in this moment I'm focused on calling for an end to genocide and calling for an immediate ceasefire. She's wow. she right. She was clear the first time. She, you can give her that point. She was. Wow. I'm, I, uh, we just had a conversation with uh, Greg Lu Lukianov, the CEO of FIRE, and I'm on the board at FIRE. So he pays very close attention to what's happening here um, on, on all sides and has for a very long time been kind of detailing the rot on various college campuses. Um, and I think it is entirely appropriate, perhaps not even appropriate. It is necessary for us to spend a fair amount of time talking about the rank and anti-Semitism that we're seeing, um, the, the, the degree to which these ideas are being taken on board. But I think it's also really important to pay special attention to the fact that it really does seem that there is something socially, culturally, and even institutionally that has allowed for us to see a generation of young people perhaps uh, certainly, I think wide swaths of the American populace be conditioned in such a way that they apparently can take any number of really bad ideas on board and suddenly they become the most important and urgent concern of their lives. They don't have any perhaps experience or knowledge of the geopolitical situation in the Middle East, but suddenly um, after just a little bit of priming, they find themselves able to recite uh, uh, an entire uh, dossier of horrible crimes that have been committed by one side, but certainly that could justify just about anything on the other side. We've seen a pretty steady um, increase in the percentage of people who will report to pollsters that they are they believe that at some point political violence is justified. People who insist that they feel uncomfortable sharing their honest opinions on college campuses. Like those conditions have helped to create the circumstance that we find ourselves in today. And the way that we respond to that, I think, is incredibly important. It is, it is worth acknowledging that one of the things that was most egregious about what was happening during 2020 when left-wing protesters were kind of taking over certain areas is that they were uh, kind of fundamentalist, that they were uncompromising, that there was uh, a pretty determined effort to eviscerate any distinction between people who had genuinely bad ideas and people who kind of on the margins just disagreed with something politically um, or disagreed with something philosophically on very virtuous and noble grounds. And I think respecting 
that difference is absolutely vital and important. Um, being wary of sort of blacklist campaigns that have spun up in recent weeks um, to identify in some cases, entire groups of people, anyone even tangentially associated with an organization and say, they, we won't hire those people. Um, I think that there's a mistake in doing that. But when you see someone who is committed to um, particular ugly ideas, um, who is committed to uh, kind of xenophobic notions, who's committed to say the annihilation of a, of a particular nation state and who knows the wholesale removal of a population from an area, like that is something that's disconcerting. And if an individual company is making a determination that they don't want people like that working for them, it makes a hell of a lot of sense. But what's imperative is to be very specific and detailed when you are rejecting people on those grounds and not to simply engage in these categorical denunciations that, that are vague and nonspecific. Someone made, you know, uh, an intolerant statement and then you never find out what the intolerant statement is. Um, so I hope that as we are navigating these things and as universities do and as people of good conscience do, that we'll always make it a point to draw lines to make the distinctions um, where other people haven't. Uh, because there's a, there's a real uh, risk of falling into a situation where we're just kind of exchanging categorical denunciations and things beget uh, this kind of uh, beginning, this kind of reactionary spiral, um, and I don't, I don't want to see that either. As much as I am inclined to see us genuinely confront the, the again, really ugly specter of anti-Semitism in our midst, and I think it's real and it's tangible. Um, but I do think it's possible to maintain concern about both things. I mean, I, I agree with you that just because you may have been part of a group that signed one of these letters, that doesn't necessarily mean you should never be hired. But the people who actually signed the letters, the people who pushed those letters, denouncing Israel and only Israel as they were still mm -hmm. counting the number of babies dead, they they can F off. I Never. I want to know their names. I will never hire them. Rhino Workman, who is in my former field as a lawyer. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, Winston and Strawn's not the only one who's not going to hire you. No one Agreed. is going to hire you other than those lunatics at the UN Human Rights Council that maybe they'll they'll want you. But like individuals like that who have outed themselves as these, look at her, there, here she is. She's doing, she's doing Welsh's favorite thing of pulling down the posters. Here she's in brown here. If, for the viewers who are watching this at home, she's pulling down the posters. There she is. She doesn't want you to see or think about the children or the innocents being held hostage. In no, and I want to know who the girl next to her is too. These, there is zero chance of me hiring these girls. I hope no one hires them. I am 100% in favor of them suffering when it comes to gainful employment. I am like really firm on it. There's a difference between having a, a one side, having more sympathies towards one side in this to you and supporting terror. That's what they're doing. They're supporting terror. You've got to have a screw loose, loose. You're a nutcase if that's what you say in the face of the stories that we're presenting to just say, no, it's all Israel's fault. Go Hamas. That's what they're saying, Moynihan. I'm, I'm I mean, it's like, like, harshly you know, against. It's, uh, it's often overlooked, too, that when these people are having job offers withdrawn, that this is framed as a speech issue. OK, I'm willing to 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 have that conversation. But the action of pulling people's posters down, by the way, is itself a speech issue. You're trying to mm -hmm. um, kind of squelch somebody else, else's spirit. Put a poster next to it. You want to put a Hamas poster up? Fine. <laughs> you want to look uh -huh. as if a psycho. And by the way, the prevalence of this stuff, the ubiquity of this stuff, Matt saw it the other day. I saw it uh, last week. I was walking down Madison Avenue. I have a witness, and the witness is a woman that had to restrain me, which is why I didn't do anything. <laughs> Seeing a woman tearing these posters down, and she looked at me, and she said, Michael? And I said, I know. I'm going to go to jail, so just let's just get on the subway. and just Because there was no one else around. It wasn't like a mob. It was just a, it would have been a right. bad scene. But I saw this the other day. Camille can acknowledge the fact that um, when I used to live in South Williamsburg, because 
I don't just pretend, Megan. I live amongst the Hasidim. I try <laughs> to. Amazing. I am the I am the Shabbos goy. I am there for their protection. Same. Sure. Same. A lot of lights on Saturdays. <laughs> I did, which, by the way, I did one time when I was very drunk. I was pulled in, and they said, "Are you Jewish?" And my response was, "I don't know." In certain times, this answer is different. I mean, if it's in if it's right now, no. But I, I was a Shabbos goy. But Camille left my apartment one night after we had been recording. Uh, an episode of the fifth column, and he ran into somebody uh, screaming anti-Semitic things at a Hasidic person walking by and was texting me. And he said, I'm down the street. This is happening right now. And it's an incredible thing to me because when you have a handful of complete psycho yahoos at Charlottesville saying Jews will not replace us, that dominated conversation about the American political landscape for many, many years. I want to tell you about my new sponsor, C60 Power. C60 Power says it can help to increase energy and mental clarity by neutralizing oxidative stress and the toxic free radicals that contribute to aging. If you have not heard of Carbon 60 before, it's also known as C60, which C60 Power says is a powerful, naturally occurring, Nobel Prize winning antioxidant that works at the cellular level. Now, not all producers of C60 are created equal. It's very important to go for high quality, 99.99% pure C60 and do not accept any cheap knockoffs. Many people who consume just a teaspoon a day of C60 power as part of their morning routine note an increase in energy and mental clarity within 30 days of daily use. If you feel like you're slowing down, could benefit from more energy and mental clarity, and you're ready to kick brain fog to the curb, you can visit shopc60.com and use the code MEGAN10 for 10% off your first order. That's shopc60.com, promo code MEGAN10, or just click the link in the description or shopc60.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.